You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great hump day. I hope you're humping, getting over the hump, or whatever you do on hump day, just make sure you're getting it in. You know, um, this is kind of small, but maybe it's really big of the bigger picture. You know, fans out there want their pound of flesh or five pounds of flesh. Hell, they want a whole body bloodied. They are sick and tired of the same bullshit that we always get. You know, we've heard Jerry Jones say, we, we're going to make a big splash, you know, for the defensive coordinator. You know, and here's what we've got is we've got Mike Zimmer. We've got Ron Rivera, and we got Wink Markendale, and we got Jaden, uh, Aiden, uh, Aiden, Aiden, Aiden Duran, uh, our defensive line coach, that are being interviewed. I don't see the big splash. I've talked about, you know, maybe he's looking for a belly flop because that'll be a big splash and all that. But Dan Quinn, having left the Cowboys yesterday, with his press conference was yes. I'm sorry. The day before yesterday with this press conference, he said to Chick Hernandez, he was talking about the sense of urgency that tomorrow's not promised. Next year's not promised that you got to go in right now for your fan base and, and take care of them. Cause you don't know what's going to happen. You could end up losing your quarterback. You could end up losing your key players. You know, Jerry is not a spring chicken and all that kind of stuff. And it seemed like that was a knock on the Cowboys organization about not going all in. And we as fans can look at that and say, yeah, we see that. We see in free agency where the Cowboys have literally been bottom feeders. We've been like crabs. We're on the bottoms just getting all the dead shit that's up, okay? We're not sharks in the water that we're the apex predator that we're going to go get what we want. We're going to get a full meal. We just got leavings. Let me play what he said yesterday and listen to it. I heard Dan Quinn, this fan base went, wait a second, that guy had a star in a sweater. <laughs> but my high school is this too. Really? Yeah, so Marstown High, Maroon. And uh, so going there, going to Salisbury, and uh, it does feel like every once in a while you find the right spot for the right person at the right time. And I feel like that's here with me. And uh, so that's why I'm all lit up about, you know, being here and, and helping this fan base to go. Like, where else would you rather be? Mm -hmm. You know, for a fan base that doesn't care? No, you'd rather be everything all in to know how important having a really good football team is. Everything all in to understand how important a team is. You know, for this area, like, I know that. And I want to be a part of that. And then that's where you can make your mark. It's not another one. Like, they're living in it right now, and they got to go for it. Like, this is the only year we have. And I really feel that way. Like, it's not two years from now. It's not next year. It is all in for this. Because in our game, as you know, that next year is not promised. i got to tell you, when they heard Dan. There you go. That next year is not promised. And, you know, we want to go ahead and blame Dak Prescott. Before Dak Prescott, we wanted to blame Romo. But you have to, you, you can't. You can't look at how nothing has changed and blame the new guy that's come in to fill the, 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 the void that's there. You can't continue. If It's not like if the Cowboys had won Super Bowls with Tony Romo or Drew Bledsoe or with the other coaching that we've had, you know, since – Barry Switzer, I'd say, yeah, it's the quarterback because it's the quarterback who's not able to keep up with the standards of what we've had. But when you take 
the years before Dak Prescott, and you look at the years of Tony Romo, and Tony Romo was a great quarterback doing some magical things. Tony Romo never quite had it all together, a complete team. I know Joe, the fan out there, wants to think that the only thing you have to have is a quarterback, and I know people just, you just trying to, trying to save Dak. He's garbage. You need to get rid of him. You know, I'm sitting here, and I see my man DMV retweeted uh, Sean Merriam who still says, even though Justin Herbert has done nothing in the playoffs other than blow a big lead and has lost to Dak Prescott the two times that he's played him, is still swearing that Justin Herbert's a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. But be that as it may, Justin Herbert ain't winning any Super Bowls. Josh Allen ain't winning any Super Bowls. Lamar Jackson ain't winning any Super Bowls. The only one I see that's out there that's winning them is Pat Mahomes. And I look at Pat Mahomes between the players that he's had with him, his ability that's above and beyond everybody else's, the defense that he has this year, which has actually saved them, the running game that they have, and one of the greatest coaches that are out there in Andy Reid, that these things aren't equal with what's going on with Dallas. So the question begs is, are we going to continue with Stephen Jones talking about, because the Cowboys truly talk about, you know, we don't want to mess up the future. Bro, bro, if you're constantly worried about the future and not today, you're never going to make that future the Super Bowl. It's just not. We hear Jerry say the right things. We hear the players say the right things. But I don't know if we're going to get the right things. We do not have enough. Let me be clear here. You can blame it and say it's Dak Prescott's not enough. That he's not good enough to carry the load. And I agree, he's not enough to carry the load by himself. When we got guys like Sam Williams that are making eight special team penalties on the season. When you have a C.D. Lamb that is breaking Cowboys records and the next guy is a 1,000 yards behind it, when your lead back is averaging 4.1 yards a carry and you're in the middle of the pack as far as running the football, when your offensive line is shuffling lineups on a regular basis and no longer consistent, you're not winning the Super Bowl. Let's be clear here. You are not. When you are putting a safety and saying, that's good enough for a linebacker, it's not good enough. So until the Cowboys start playing to win the game, it's not going to happen. Let's listen to Marcus Spears for a minute about the Mike Zimmer possibility for a hire. Mike McCarthy still filling out his staff in Dallas. Adam Schefter, what do we know about his search for a new defensive coordinator? All right, Laura, with Joe Wick Jr. going to Washington as the defensive coordinator, Mike Zimmer interviewed over the weekend. Ron Rivera, the former commander's head coach, also was talking to the Cowboys about that job. When you talk about Mike Zimmer, he spent so much time in the Cowboys organization. They know him so well, and he's got the support of so many key people like a Deion Sanders who want to make it happen. And so, again, it wouldn't be a surprise if he wound up being the pick. Marcus, if you had your choice of all the available guys out there, who do you want as the next D.C. in Dallas? Jesus. It would be Wing Martindale for me. Um, I think there needs to be an aggressive style of play in Dallas, and I love what Wing does. And now a lot of people are super cautious about how much he pressures the quarterback, how much he brings blitzes. But Wink has shown that not only during a tumultuous season at times, he can still galvanize a defense to play well enough to keep him in games and actually win and close out some games. But more importantly, I know him personally. I know how guys respond to what Wink Martindale is, is giving them because he lives what he's saying. I think there needs to be a clear message, but also needs to, I think there needs to be a guy that comes into the building that can get these guys moving forward and motivated with a di little different personality, and mm. that personality is aggressiveness. Yeah, at Wink Blitz on 43% of dropbacks in the last two seasons. That's the highest rate in the NFL. He's bringing it. All right, let's get to some more top stories with Adam, <laughs> starting with some scheduling news for week one. What okay, do we need to so there well, you go. After the, 
the Eagles, of course, are going to be starting the season out in uh, Brazil. Congratulations to them. They have to leave the country they played so bad last year. Now, <clears throat> one other piece before I get out of here. I'm going to hit the road and going to be at the Red Brick House. We have any news breaking on the uh, big splash that we're all waiting for. Stefan Diggs. This is going to be an interesting one. I, we, we hear about this every year with Stefan Diggs. But the thing is, is if the Buffalo Bills get rid of Stefan Diggs, they're going to be on the chain for $31 million. I'm not so sure they're going to be willing to eat that. Let's listen in. Diggs at the Pro Bowl, he was asked about his future in Buffalo. And what he said was fascinating. Now, this was not on camera, but I will read you his quotes. He said, obviously, there's a lot of changes going on, a lot of things going on. I can't really put the carriage before the horse. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell you what the future holds, mm -hmm. but I'm still being me. And when asked if he was ready to move forward with the Bills, he replied, I'm ready to go no matter which way it goes. It's not a very definitive response. It's not, it's oh, not. yes, I'm dying to be back in Buffalo. I want right. to finish my career there. What should we make of that? I think there's a, I think there's a chance that he's elsewhere. I do. And... and there's a lot to figure out in Buffalo. They have, you know, they have to replenish in the, in the defensive secondary. Even if Diggs is back, they probably need to add a piece uh, at, at wide receiver, maybe one or two. But, look, he, he kind of vanished from the offense a little bit second half of the year when Joe Brady became the offensive coordinator. Brady is back as offensive coordinator next year. We know that last offseason there was some dissatisfaction with Stephon Diggs and the team, and Stephon Diggs and the coaching staff. So we don't know where that relationship stands. The contract is is not easy. Like it would be a thirty one million dollar dead dead there money hit if they were to trade him. Um, but if he were to want out, uh, hypothetically, if he were to want out, then maybe you could you could work with him on the contract a little bit and, and maybe uh, figure something out. But I would not be surprised if this is if this was not the last time we heard about this. I it think has, there's a chance he goes elsewhere. Yeah, it has just felt for a while, D Wood and. and it's not clear, at least to me, exactly what the genesis of it all is, and it may be more than one thing, but it has just not felt for a while like everything is A-OK -okay mm -hmm. with Stefan Diggs in Buffalo. Yeah, it, it seemed like it's been trending that way pretty much, you know, the last uh, a three couple years. years ago, the second half of the season, you know, his, his production really diminished. And then, obviously, we know about that playoff game against the Cincinnati Bengals where, you know, <laughs> just saw the frustration and how animated he was on the sideline. And it's just been trending downward ever since. And we, you know, Joe Brady coming in, being a new offensive coordinator, we saw that his role was, was diminished again this year. Yeah. Can that relationship be repaired? Because something is going on with Stephon Diggs in, in this organization. Nick. Yeah, Diggs was the spark that kind of got Josh Allen's career to shoot off into the stratosphere. There you go. And it feels like they've gotten that out of him now, and it doesn't feel like he's as important to the offense. I still think he's an incredibly talented receiver, but whatever's going there doesn't feel like – whatever's going on there doesn't feel like it's going to end well with Stephon Diggs, which is bad for Diggs probably to go somewhere else because the chances are the quarterback won't be nearly – as good as Josh Allen, but it also sucks for the Bills because to Graz's point, they don't have like a huge stockpile of great Wide receivers. receivers they, yeah. Even if they keep digs, they need another receiver opposite him. So when your quarterback is as good as Josh Allen, it's important to have weapons that he trusts and likes to throw the ball to. And we at least know that at some point he trusted uh, Stephon Diggs. And if he's gone, they're going to have to go get two or three new receivers and hope right, we'll figure two all of them that out. land at least. There you go. Now, I wouldn't, um, I would say that I wouldn't mind that possibility for the Cowboys. I, I honestly would not. Don't know what it would cost him as far as draft compensation. They ended up giving up a number one for him originally with the uh, Minnesota Vikings. But I think you need a fiery individual like him to spark the offense. But we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll, I'll have more on that a little bit later. I'm going to get ready to get up out of here and hit the road. As always, I appreciate you guys. Our coach here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.